Um, I'm Doug Hazelman, uh, VP of Product Strategy here at Veeam. I am VM Doug on Twitter, so feel free to send me some tweets. Joined today by Clint Wyckoff, who is our, one of our technical evangelists. He's at Clint Wyckoff. It's kind of on the presentation there. Um, and we also have a special guest, is Justin Giardina. Giardina, sorry. Um, Justin I from. Practiced. <clears throat> yeah, he did. Justin from Island is going to be here because we're going to be talking today about Cloud Connect. Um, we have two different services. We have Backup as a Service and Disaster Recovery as a Service through what we call Veeam Cloud Connect. And so Clint's going to kind of walk through that, how all that works. And there's some really cool networking stuff that we do on the replication side for a partial site failover and those types of things. So I'm sure it'll bring some lively discussion uh, as we go forward. Uh, how many of you guys are familiar with Veeam? Most of you? Okay. Sort of. So I get the marketing slides um, that everyone absolutely loves. So I want to talk just a little bit about Veeam as a company. Um, we are global, located in Bar, Switzerland. Um, founded in 2006, so this is our, actually our 10-year anniversary year. Um, but interesting note, backup and replication, Veeam backup and replication, which is what we're known for, has only been shipping for eight years. So we released it um, at VMworld Europe in 2008. Um, but we've had great growth. Um, we have no VC funding. Uh, so you know, we're completely private, we're not public. Um, no, one, no one externally pulling the strings. Um, great revenue growth, almost $500 million in bookings last year. Uh, 2,000 employees globally and 39,000 what we call pro partners. Uh, channel is how we go to market, so we sell through the channel. Um, and we also have what we call our Veeam Cloud and Service Providers, of which iLand is one of them, um, that provide additional services to our customers or services to their customers um, as needed. So. 193,000 customers as of the end of the first quarter of this year. We just finished Q2, so this number will get updated because we're adding about 3,500 customers a month. So we are still growing rapidly. Um, we estimate around 11.1 .1 million VMs being protected. That's kind of an estimate based on number of VMs per core and those types of things and sockets. Um, but from a customer satisfaction standpoint, you know, we, we have a logo or it, we're kind of phasing that out, but you know, it just works. Um, and that's what our customers have told us. Customer satisfaction is very high. Uh, 61 net promoter score, which is apparently, according to this, three times the industry average. Because that goes from negative 100 to positive 100. Uh, so 61 is definitely way, way above the midpoint um, in net promoter scores. So that's the numbers. Uh, one of the things we talk about quite a bit is innovation and being first to market with a number of features. And we, we also call this our reverse roadmap, which is now becoming kind of an eye chart because um, you probably can't really see a whole lot of what's going on up there. Uh, but you know, all the way back in 2008 when we first introduced being backup and replication, you know, being the two-in-one with backup and replication in, in a single product, instant file level recovery, you know, those things are kind of table stakes now. Uh, V5, back in 2010, we premiered that at a uh, virtualization field day. Um, and that was kind of the first public demo and discussion we've ever, we'd ever had around um, a number of things, you know, instant VM recovery, sure backup, you know, recovery verification, all those types of things. Really unique technology for its time six years ago. Um, <clears throat> so, and we, we continue to kind of build on these different technologies as we move forward. So this idea of the on-demand sandbox of virtual lab is something that we built into verifying verification for replicas. We've also built it into verification for even uh, storage, storage level snapshots. Uh, so again, number of things. We're going to focus quite a bit today on, on V9 and some of the things we've introduced with that. So that's V9. Um, you can see we started making announcements about V9 back in May of last year. Um, all the way through November, we released it. Uh, it went general availability at the beginning of the year, uh, this year, but it was actually um, released for manufacturing in mid-December, and that's when we gave it to our partners so they could start building out the services uh, like our Cloud Connect replication capability. Uh, so integration with EMC for VNX, VNXE, Cloud Connect replication. So previously we had Cloud Connect for backup, which from a customer perspective, all you do is contact a service provider, they give you a URL, a username, and a password. You plug that in to your Veeam console, and then it shows up as a remote repository. And you just say, oh, I want to copy my backups from on-prem into that cloud repository. And it does. Same thing with replication. 
So with replication, you contact a service provider. They provision you out resources in terms of storage and compute and networking. Um, they give you a username, password, URL. You plug that in. And now you have remote destination to replicate your VMs to. Um, and it goes over. You set up a recovery. You know, you set up a failover plan. Quint's going to go over all that type of stuff. Um, but it's great for, in terms of DR. Because a lot of customers don't have multiple sites. And you know, they want this idea of a remote DR site so they can actually contact one of our cloud and service providers um, and then be able to, to just do that. And now they have the peace of mind that if anything bad happens, they can fail over. Um, we also have a number of different storage integrations. We had support for Oracle, um, some great things around remote office, branch office, um, additional tape support, because tape is not dead, no, as, as, as we, like to, we like to say. Um, additional backup storage integration, so when you think of things like HP Store Once, EMC Data Domain, or any dedupe, of, any dedupe device, um, you know, adding in additional support there. <clears throat> and of course, one of the things that it's, you know, I'm most excited about in terms of where we can take this technology is what we call scale out backup repository. Um, and the idea there is, it's kind of, I call it storage to find backup, uh, software to find backup storage, uh, because you define kind of a, this centralized, the scale out repository, and then you add extents onto the back of that. And you can define what those extents are. So you can do performance, um, or you can do um, what we call locality. And if you do performance, as you add an extent, you can say, this is fast, or it's either fast or slow. So you, you can store your incrementals on the fast storage and your fulls on the slow storage. And because we do synthetic full creation, that means that backup time will be extremely fast. When it creates a full, it won't affect the actual backup window. It'll just go ahead and create that on the, on the slower extent. So there's a lot more that we're going to be able to add into this in terms of that software-defined type area. Um, now, of course, the future is now. <laughs> uh, we're talking, we've been talking um, the last couple of months about our, a new version coming out, version 9.5. Uh, and that's going to be coming out here within the next couple of months. No definite time date. We're kind of waiting a little bit on Windows Server 2016 because uh, a lot of what we're doing um, is around full support for Windows Server 2016. A lot of great new things that Microsoft is doing there. Um, we'll actually have uh, some more information about that available tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, around 10 a.m. Eastern um, is when the press release goes out in terms of all the different stuff that we're supporting uh, for Windows Server 2016. Um, also, um, in terms of primary storage, uh, we are adding support for nimble snapshots. Uh, so, you know, that's another, you know, kind of adds on to what we already have for HP, um, for NetApp, for EMC. Uh, now we'll have that same type of integration for Nimble. Um, and Nimble's very excited about that. Had some drinks with them last night. Uh, so that's all good. And in terms of, you know, I talked earlier about this idea of innovation and over the last year, eight, last eight years and all different types of things we've done. Uh, we've got a lot coming this year uh, in terms of releases. It's the most we've ever done in a single year. Uh, so I've already mentioned we've got 9.5 coming out. That's you know kind of a, an incremental release on version 9. Uh, but we've also or, we've already announced what we call VM Availability Orchestrator. Um, and that the idea there is orchestrating your disaster recovery, uh, orchestrating DR. So it's an orchestration engine that in version 1 is going to focus on DR so you'll be able to build your test plans, test them, and then, of course, document them. Um, it's all going to be policy-based, so as the environment changes, all that, all that will update. Uh, we also are, um, have our agent technology. Uh, so how many of you are familiar with our Veeam endpoint backup free? Uh, you're, all running at, you're all running Macs, so OK, probably none of you. No, not all of you. No. <laughs> huh? I'd back up my home machine with it. OK, yeah. So that's going to get rebranded a little bit to Veeam agent for Windows. Um, and then we already have in beta Veeam Agent for Linux. Uh, so this is agent-based technology, which is different than what we've always talked about. We've always done agentless on the virtualization side. But when we think about it in terms of cloud, um, as, as our, our CEO likes to say, there are no sockets in the cloud. Uh, so we have to go kind of go a different approach in terms of cloud-based workloads. And it just also so happens to support physical as well. Uh, so we've got Veeam Agent for, for Windows, Veeam Agent for Linux. Those will both be free in terms of the agent offering itself. Um, and then we will have some paid options in terms of support and some management capabilities. Um, and then we also um, announced at Veeam On last year um, our Veeam Managed Backup Portal uh, for service providers. And we're going to have some additional announcements around that, um, I think, in the August 23rd timeframe um, in terms of where we're taking that. But the idea there is if you're a service provider, um, you can actually deploy this 
or even if you're just a value-added reseller and you don't provide any services today, you can deploy this portal in Azure and then connect to your Veeam customers and all the information from them flows up so you can see where their progress is at in terms of are they having successful backups and replicas. Um, you can also then connect it into Cloud Connect and see what they're doing and, and have them transfer their backups and up into Azure. Um, and then there's a whole dashboard for that as well as billing and those types of things. So a lot of great plans for the managed backup portal that we'll be talking about a little bit more um, towards the end of August.